Hello, and welcome to this video on Picket, Robot Vision Made Easy. Here, we will talk about how we instruct Picket on where to pick objects. Picket has a notion of what we call the region of interest, which is a 3D box where detections take place. Typically, the camera, the 3D camera, has a field of view that is larger than the region where we actually want to detect objects, which could be, for instance, inside of this bin. So, in this example, for instance, we can see that uh, the camera is not only capturing the bin contents and the actual bin structure, but also the supporting surface, the flat surface where the bin is, is lying on. And why is this relevant? Why is this important? There are two main reasons. The first one is that if we have a smaller region in which we perform object detection, then we will have faster detection times. If we, for instance, take a look at this particular example, we see that if we detect objects only in the bin, this is 30% faster than if we would do it in the full scene. And the other reason is that it helps us to prevent unwanted detections, because it could be the case that in the field of view of the camera, there could be two bins, one next to each other, and we are only interest, interested in picking objects from one of the bins. So if we snap the region of interest to be inside only one of the bins, then Picket will only detect objects there. Then Picket has the optional feature that it can perform collision checks. And one of the checks that it does is between the robot tool and the bin. So some applications like bin picking have an actual physical boundary between the region of interest uh, and the outside. But there are, of course, other applications where this is not the case, such as depalletizing. So when we do want to have these collision checks enabled between robot tool and the bin, Picket will, by default, make the bin be the same as the region of interest. And this works well for most of the cases. But sometimes it could be the case that you have a bin where parts can actually overflow above the bin. In these situations, you are interested in probably having a region of interest that is taller than the bin, but the actual collision object of the bin, the bin model, should be should coincide with the with the physical boundary of the bin. And this is something that we can do. Uh, so having said this, uh, the only thing that remains to be to be mentioned is how we actually specify uh, the dimensions and the orientation of this bin. And your picket system, it ships with these, with these markers that you can use to easily and intuitively specify where the box should be. And we are going to show this with a short live demonstration. So uh, right here, we have the picket user interface. It's web-based. And then here uh, to the left, we have the latest capture of the 2D camera, uh, 2D image of the camera. Uh, and then here to the right, we have the configuration of the detection uh, problem. And the first step here, the one that's highlighted, that's called setup, here is where you specify where Picket should look for objects. If we now open this first accordion, that is called build region of interest box, you see that the camera starts to flash and that we are now capturing a live camera stream. So what I'm going to do right now is that I'm going to place these three markers in corners of the bin. And as you can see in the 2D view of the camera, there are each marker is outlined in blue, meaning that it was detected. And here to the right, uh, there's a region of interest building method that's called around QR markers. You can actually see that if I hide one of these markers such that it's not visible, then the button becomes disabled. And if all three markers are visible, then this button becomes enabled. So if I click here now, we get a notification that the region of interest is being built. And once it's done, we have a confirmation. We can see it drawn here in blue. And we can not only see the result of what we did in the 2D viewer, but if we switch here to 3D, we can see a live 3D capture of what the camera is seeing right now. So we can see the bin, and we can also see the table where the bin is sitting. If we now go 
to the next view here, which is called points. Points, the points view will only show you what is inside the region of interest. And for instance, here we can see that we have part of the bin walls and we don't really want to have that when we, when we run our obstacle detection. So if we go to the next accordion, which is called fine tune the region of interest box, we see that we have these colored arrows that are aligned with the X, Y, Z axis. And then we can drag the size of the box to make it smaller. And then we can check if we still have these parts of the bin sides contained inside a region of, in of interest. Something else that, that happened is that uh, we can see that our region of interest is much higher than the actual bin. So one thing that we should definitely do is make it much lower. There it is. And then you can not only drag and drop these markers, which is an approximate method to resize uh, the region of interest, you can actually go here to the right and you can input exact values if that is what you prefer. So one thing that I like to do always when I'm setting up my region of interest is that if I have the parts that I want to detect, which in this case is uh, some plastic sockets, I place them inside the region of interest. And if I can, in each of the corners of it, which in this case, it's, it's really easy because these parts have, have right angles, so I can really snap it to the corners of the region of interest. And then I run one detection and I check how the points view looks. So you can see here that from the top, the parts are captured quite well. For instance, if I would uh, do this and I detect, then I'm chopping off part of, of the geometry that, that's not desired. So I really want to capture the full shape of the parts. But there's actually one thing that's missing, which is uh, these holes, they have, they have a surface below, which is, which is quite low. And for the first layer of objects, we see that right now, the, the bottom surface of the region of interest is, seems to be a bit too high. So if we see here, it's set at five millimeters above uh, where the markers were detected. This is the default. Uh, I'm going to lower this a bit from five to three millimeters. And if we detect again, we can now see that we are capturing the bottom part of the, of the geometry, which is what we are actually expecting. Um, so for most situations, this would be enough. This is all that you would need. And then once you're done, you could, for instance, go here and save as and give this a name, sockets. And then you get a confirmation that it got saved. But as I mentioned before, it might be the case that your, your bin for collision avoidance is different than your region of interest. And if this would be the case, here we have an, an advanced option that is defined bin box. And we can say, I want it to be different from the region of interest. So if I would like, for instance, the region of interest to be taller, I could do this, and then the bin is smaller. I could also change the bin dimensions here, make it smaller, make it taller. But in this way, we can have in blue, a larger region of interest, and in green, the bin used for collision checking. And then we can save the changes that we did, and then we're all set to go. A final remark would be that uh, the changes that we saved here are in this setup file, which is mentioned on top, sockets.setup. In Piggy, there's two types of configuration files. The setup file, where we store information on where to look for parts. And then we have another file, which is the product file, where we store what to look for and how to pick it. That's all for now. Thank you so much for watching.